Welcome to the I-95 at US-1 Interchange Project Development and Environment or pd and Study Public Hearing. This public hearing is for Financial Project Identification or FPID number 419772-2, Efficient Transportation Decision Making or ETDM number 14442. This environmental study has been conducted by FDOT District 5 in compliance with all applicable federal environmental laws. The environmental review, consultation, and other actions required by applicable federal environmental laws for this project are being or have been carried out by FDOT pursuant to 23 United States Code, Section 327, and Memorandum of Understanding dated May 26, 2022, and executed by FHWA and FDOT. The FDOT, Office of Environmental Management in Tallahassee, is the approving authority. This hearing is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This hearing is being conducted virtually through GoToWebinar and over the phone on Wednesday, March 29, 2023, and in person on Thursday, March 30, 2023. A copy of the presentation is available on the project webpage at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 419772-2. For online participants, the GoToWebinar control panel should be visible in the upper right corner of your computer screen. If joining GoToWebinar on your mobile device, simply tap the screen to display the same options. The blue arrows in both images point to where you will find the question box. You can type a comment or question into the question box. Then click send to submit your comment or question to staff. The red arrows in both images point to where you can find handouts, documents, and comment forms for this public hearing. Click the handouts icon to see available handouts. Click on the file name to download. If you are participating online or over the phone and happen to experience a technical issue during this hearing, please type the issue in the questions box on the control panel on GoToWebinar or send an email to Justin Hanna, J-U-S-T-I-N dot H-A-N-N-A-H at R-S-A-N-D-H dot com to report it. You may also call staff at 407 893-5860, who will do their best to assist you. The purpose of tonight's public hearing is to share information with the public about the proposed improvements, its conceptual design, all alternatives that were studied, and the potential beneficial and adverse social, economic, and environmental impacts upon the community. The public hearing also serves as an official forum, providing an opportunity for members of the public to express their opinions regarding the project. The three primary components of tonight's hearing are, first, the open house, which occurred prior to this presentation, where you were invited to view the project displays via the GoToWebinar or the project website. Second, this presentation, which will explain the project's purpose and need, study alternatives, potential impacts, and proposed methods to mitigate the adverse project impacts. Third, a formal comment period following this presentation, where you will have the opportunity to provide oral or written comments. This public hearing was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Melissa McKinney, FDOT District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, DeLand, Florida, 32720, 6834 by phone at 
1-800-943-5077 or email at m-e-l-i-s-s-a dot m-c-k-i-n-n-e-y at d-o-t dot state dot f-l dot u-s. You may also contact the State Title VI Coordinator, Stefan Kulikowski, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, by phone at 850-414-4742, or email at stefan dot k u l a k o w s k i at d o t dot state dot f l dot u s all inquiries or complaints will be handled according to f d o t procedures and in a prompt and courteous manner this information is shown on the project website and in the hearing notifications this public hearing was advertised consistent with the federal and state requirements shown on the slide. This public hearing was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register on FDOT's public notices website, the project website, and in the Daytona Beach News Journal. In addition, adjacent property owners, interested individuals, elected and appointed officials, and government agencies were also notified about this public hearing. Project documents are available for viewing at two locations, the Ormond Beach Regional Library at 30 South Beach Street, Ormond Beach, Florida, 32174, Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and on Sunday from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m., and at the Office of Giabi Consulting Management, located at 1459 North U.S. Highway 1, Suite 3, Ormond Beach, Florida, 32174, Monday through Friday, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. To schedule an appointment, please call 386-238-9798 or email Claire at C-L-A-I-R-E at G-H-Y-A-B-I dot com. The project documents are also available on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 419772-2. A PD&E study is a blending of engineering, environmental assessments, and public involvement activities. The process is used by engineers and planners to determine the location and conceptual design of preferred roadway improvements. The PD&D and design phases of this project are fully funded and overlap, which helps fast track the process. The right-of-way phase is partially funded and typically involves acquisition of any necessary right-of-way for the construction of the project. The project would be built during the construction phase, which is currently unfunded. The I-95 interchange with US-1 is located within the city of Ormond Beach in Volusia County. The interchange is the gateway to these communities and serves a high volume of unique traffic. The interchange provides access to world-class events throughout the year, such as Speed Week, Bike Week, and Biketoberfest. The limits of this study encompass approximately one mile north and one mile south of the interchange along I-95. Along US-1, we are evaluating widening from the existing four lanes to six lanes between Broadway Avenue, which is also Plantation Oaks Boulevard, and Destination Daytona Lane, a distance of approximately one mile. The purpose of this study is to develop and evaluate alternatives that will accommodate the existing and future travel demand, improve safety, and enhance the pedestrian environment. This project is needed to improve traffic operations and mobility, reduce congestion, and enhance safety for all modes of travel, including bicyclists and pedestrians. Next, we'll talk about the existing characteristics of the study area. 
The interchange was designed and constructed in the early 1960s. In the decades since its construction, design standards have been updated to keep pace with automobile technology, safety requirements, and driver characteristics. As such, some of the original interchange elements, like the median openings and driveway connections, no longer meet current spacing standards. The Florida East Coast, or FEC, railroad that parallels US-1 to the south, and the cellular communications tower, located within the northeast quadrant, are additional existing features that will influence the design of potential solutions. Additionally, the tight loop ramps, vertical profile, and vertical clearance of the I-95 bridges over US-1 and the I-95 bridges over the FEC railroad do not meet current FDOT standards and the existing bicycle and pedestrian features along US-1 do not extend the entire length of the study segment. As the approved mixed-use developments within the area like Ormond Crossings and Plantation Oaks are built out, thousands of new vehicles will be added to the local roadway network, many of which will use the interchange on a daily basis. And with this, congestion will intensify. For example, the analysis forecasts traffic out to the year 2050 and predicts substantial increases in traffic volumes on both I-95 and US-1. Traffic is predicted to increase by more than 40% on I-95 and will more than double on US-1. Safety is FDOT's number one priority. This graphic or heat map represents the concentration of crashes recorded within the interchange area in the five-year span from 2015 to 2019, with light green showing the least number of crashes and red showing a cluster of high crashes. Because the data does not include crashes occurring after 2019, more recent crashes are not included in this data, including a recent fatal crash which occurred in February of this year. Hotspots on the map are generally located along US-1 at intersections, median openings, and driveways. An additional hotspot is located south of the interchange on I-95. The crash history emphasizes the purpose and need for this project. Three alternatives were evaluated for this study. The safety, traffic flow, and constructability of each alternative were just some of the aspects that were analyzed. These alternatives included a no-build alternative where the existing interchange would remain, and two build alternative options that would replace the current interchange with either an offset intersection interchange or a diverging diamond interchange or DDI. The no build alternative assumes that no improvements would be made to the interchange I-95 or US-1. This means the existing substandard conditions would remain, traffic operations and mobility will degrade, congestion will intensify, and the current bicycle and pedestrian facilities would not be improved. As such, the no-build alternative does not meet the project purpose and need. The existing typical section for US-1 consists of two lanes in each direction, a partial bicycle and pedestrian network, and an open drainage system. With the no-build alternative, the four-lane US-1 would remain in its existing condition. Several operational and design principles guided the development of the build alternatives. These key principles address the area's existing and future traffic conditions by taking into account the unique mix of passenger vehicle and truck traffic, increasing the capacity at the ramp intersections along US-1, and accommodating projected 2050 traffic conditions. The build alternatives would address deficiencies in the existing infrastructure by replacing substandard loop ramps and enhancing the bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure at the interchange. The build alternatives would also enhance safety by reducing the posted speed limit and reducing potential conflicts points at driveways and median openings along US-1. The build alternatives incorporate these principles with modifications to US-1, I-95, and the interchange ramps as described on the next few slides. Now let's review the two interchange build alternatives that were considered, starting with the offset intersection alternative. 
With this alternative, the existing substandard loop ramps would be eliminated. New ramps designed to current FDOT standards would be constructed to provide additional capacity to safely serve the movements between I-95 and US-1. Primary ramp improvements would include a new southbound exit ramp that bridges over I-95 to connect with US-1 at a single signalized intersection, parallel to the I-95 northbound entrance ramp. And new direct ramps would be constructed on the south side of the interchange to serve the movements to and from the south. The existing intersections, median openings, and driveways would be modified to minimize the number of potential conflict points. The improvement will include the replacement of the I-95 bridges over US-1 and the I-95 bridges over the FEC Railroad, as well as improvements to the I-95 mainline to accommodate the new ramp connections. The number of lanes along I-95 will not change within the project limits. Like the offset intersection alternative, the DDI alternative also satisfies the project's purpose and need. The interchange and roadway modifications proposed for the DDI alternative include the following improvements. The substandard loop ramps would be eliminated. New ramps designed to current FDOT standards would be constructed to provide additional capacity and safely serve all movements between I-95 and US-1. The DDI configuration along US-1 reduces or eliminates conflicts between left-turning vehicles, thereby enhancing the capacity to make left turns and minimizing traffic backups at the intersections. FDOT has produced a video that shows how a DDI operates. The video can be found on the project website. The existing intersections, median openings, and driveways along US-1 would be modified to minimize the number of potential conflict points, thereby reducing the opportunities for crashes. The improvement will also include the replacement of the I-95 bridges over US-1 and the I-95 bridges over the FEC Railroad, as well as improvements to the I-95 mainline to accommodate the new ramp connections. The number of lanes along I-95 will not change within the project limits. Please remember, all concepts on display tonight can be found at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 419772-2. The PD&D study determined US-1 must be widened from its current four lanes to six lanes to satisfy the project's purpose and need. The proposed typical section provides three 12-foot travel lanes in each direction with a 22-foot median. Curbs and gutters will be constructed to collect and process stormwater runoff, and 14-foot shared-use paths will be provided in both directions. This will help you visualize what the future US-1 will look like. Shown here is the existing US-1. Here is the future US-1 with a total of six travel lanes curb and gutters for stormwater collection, and new 14-foot wide shared use paths to safely serve bicyclists and pedestrians. The DDI was selected as the preferred alternative for a number of key reasons, which include safety, as the DDI eliminates the need for left-turning vehicles to cross opposing traffic, and also reduces the potential for wrong-way crashes onto ramps due to the configuration of the interchange. The DDI also enhances safety for pedestrians and bicyclists with the addition of shared use paths and signal controlled crossings along the roadway. The DDI also improves interchange capacity and traffic operations by accommodating high volumes of heavy vehicle traffic with changes to the roadway geometry and reduction of conflict points. The DDI will operate with only two traffic signal phases which will allow more traffic to move through the interchange with fewer delays. Public input and support was also a key part of the selection of the DDI as the preferred alternative. Following the alternative's public open house, many members of the public showed support of the DDI as the preferred alternative. The design of the DDI provides many operational and safety benefits for drivers, pedestrians, and bicyclists. The large number of left turns, coupled with the high percentage of trucks, makes the DDI a perfect fit for this location. 
In general, US-1 traffic approaching the DDI will cross over at signalized intersections, which then provides free-flowing movements for the large number of vehicles turning left to get onto I-95. The left turns exiting I-95 merge with the US-1 traffic rather than cross it. This configuration improves traffic flow while minimizing the number of potential crash locations and the potential severity of those crashes. The DDI also increases the safety features for pedestrians and bicyclists with protected signalized crossing. The PD&D study has evaluated the potential impacts and benefits to the social and economic, physical, natural, and cultural environments associated with each alternative. Avoidance or minimization of impacts to these features is a key consideration in the selection of the preferred alternative. The evaluation matrix shown on these two slides compare the preferred alternative to the no-build alternative. The project meets the purpose and need by accommodating future traffic demand, improving safety, and improving bicycle and pedestrian facilities at the interchange. The project will result in 9.7 acres of right-of-way acquisitions, affecting 18 parcels and 15 property owners. Two businesses, which are located on one parcel, will be displaced. The project will change the driveway access of seven businesses and the median access of 10 businesses. The projected noise levels will not result in traffic impacts or require noise abatement measures and utility impacts will be minor. The project is anticipated to result in 2.4 acre feet of floodplain impacts and 1.5 acres of wetland impacts. As a result, the project will provide 3.9 acres of floodplain compensation sites. Avoidance and minimization will continue to be incorporated as practical throughout the PD&D and design phases. The project is anticipated to result in a determination of may affect, but not likely to adversely affect for two federally listed species, and no adverse effect anticipated for 16 state listed species. The project will not adversely affect any site listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The design cost of the project is estimated to be $3.3 million. The construction, engineering, and inspection cost is estimated to be $11.8 million. Right-of-way, which is partially funded, is estimated to be $31.3 million. And construction, which is not yet funded, is estimated to be $169 million. This brings the total estimated cost of the project to $215.4 million. These costs differ from those shown previously in the preliminary evaluation matrix summary, as they represent a more refined total and now includes estimated right-of-way costs. This evaluation matrix is located in the control panel of the GoToWebinar and the project website. Overall, no significant impacts to the social and economic, physical, natural, or cultural environments are anticipated to occur as a result of the construction of the preferred alternative. A preliminary drainage analysis was performed for each interchange alternative during the PD&D study in accordance with all FDOT and St. John's River Water Management District standards. Three alternative pond sites were considered within each drainage basin to identify the most efficient and cost-effective stormwater solution. In accordance with Executive Order 11990, the project analyzed wetland impacts. Any unavoidable impacts to wetlands will be mitigated to achieve no net loss of wetland function. In accordance with Executive Order 11988, the project also analyzed floodplain impacts and floodplain compensation sites. The project is estimated to impact a total of 2.4 acre feet of floodplains and provide 3.8 acres of floodplain compensation. It has been determined that the encroachments within this project are classified as minimal. One of the unavoidable consequences on a project such as this is the necessary relocation of families or businesses. On this project, we anticipate the relocation of two businesses 
located on one parcel. All right-of-way acquisition will be conducted in accordance with Florida Statute 339.09 .09 and the Federal Uniform Relocation Assistance and Real Property Acquisition Policies Act of 1970, commonly known as the Uniform Act. If you are required to make any type of move as a result of a Department of Transportation project, you can expect to be treated in a fair and helpful manner and in compliance with the Uniform Relocation Assistance Act. If a move is required, you will be contacted by an appraiser who will inspect your property. We encourage you to be present during the inspection and provide information about the value of your property. You may also be eligible for relocation advisory services and payment benefits. If you are being moved and you are unsatisfied with the department's determination of your eligibility for payment or the amount of that payment, you may appeal that determination. Topic number 650-000-001, Project Development and Environment Manual Public Involvement, Effective July 1, 2020, Public Involvement 11-36. You will be promptly furnished necessary forms and notified of the procedures to be followed in making that appeal. A special word of caution. If you move before you receive notification of the relocation benefits that you might be entitled to, your benefits may be jeopardized. For questions regarding relocations, please email Jesse Bluen, Project Manager, at Jesse, J E S S E, dot Bluen, B L O U I N, at dot.state.fl.us. Dot dot Approximately 9.7 acres of additional right of way will be required to construct the proposed interchange improvements. This includes the relocations of two businesses and partial impacts to other parcels for frontage road construction, intersection expansion, and drainage pond expansion. This project was developed in accordance with Section 335.199 of the Florida Statutes, which was passed in 2010, requiring FDOT to notify all affected property owners, municipalities, and counties of a proposed project that will close or modify an existing access to an abutting property owner at least 180 days before the design is finalized. The proposed improvements will remove the median openings at Rosemary Street and Benton Street, and place a median opening in between at McDonald's and Dollar General to minimize conflict points, thereby improving traffic flow and reducing the opportunities for crashes. The proposed improvements will also replace driveway access along US-1, west of the I-95 interchange with a frontage road. The new frontage road will be added to provide safe access to the properties and reduce conflict points along US-1. Planning consistency means the project descriptions and information is consistent with the FDOT and the River to Sea Transportation Planning Organization, or TPO. The I-95 at US-1 interchange is identified in Chapter 6 of the River to Sea TPO's Connect 2045 Long Range Transportation Plan. The project is listed as one of the plan's cost-feasible projects which is a project in which the TPO has identified as financially viable based on projected revenue anticipated to be available through 2045. The project is also listed in the TPO's latest five-year transportation improvement plan, or TIP. Public engagement activities and opportunities for the public throughout the PD&D study have included individual stakeholder coordination meetings, the public information meeting, in this public hearing. Preliminary design has also begun on the project concurrent with this PD&D study. The next step is to incorporate your input on this public hearing into our decision-making process. After the comment period closes and your input has been considered, a decision will be made and the final PD&D document will be sent to the FDOT Office of Environmental Management, which based on the MOU signed with FHWA on May 22, 2022, has approval authority on this project granting Location and Design Concept Acceptance, or LDCA. The approval of the LDCA marks the completion of the PD&D study. 
This project has and will continue to comply with all applicable state and federal rules and regulations. We encourage your input and feedback about this project and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public hearing record and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. All questions will be responded to in writing after the hearing. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by April 10th, 10 days after the in-person public hearing, will become part of the record for the public hearing. To submit a written comment online, please type the comment in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at www cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 419772-2. As a reminder, this presentation, along with all the materials presented tonight, are posted on the project website, which can be accessed by visiting www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 419772-2 or from the CFL Roads website main page type the project number 419772-2 in the search box at the top right and click go then click on the project name